الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبع Brother Chairman Distinguished Guests Brothers and sisters and students, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> I have come to you this morning with a bit of the flu and a little bit of the cough. So I have my black seed and uh, honey here to sit and I hope you will bear with me this morning as we address the subject <coughs> of Surah Al-Kaf and the modern age. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam is reported to have said every prophet has warned his people about Dajjal and the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam warned his people about Dajjal now listen carefully but I am going to tell you something that no one ever said before me no one ever said this before me this is absolutely new information about the Jal about the Antichrist what is it that is so important that it has come with the very last prophet no one after him what is it about the Jal that is so important that no one ever spoke of it before me what is it do not treat the subject lightly no take your time with it the Jal sees with his left eye he is blind in the right eye it looks like a bulging grip but your Lord is not one eye between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafara kafir and every mu'min the mu'min is the one who has not only made the declaration of belief with the lips, Islam, but in addition, it has traveled until it has entered the heart. So now he has Iman, so he is Mu'min. Every Mu'min would be able to read the word Kafir. Whether he is Katib or Ghayru Katib, whether he is literate or illiterate, he can read and write or cannot read and write. This is what was saved until the last. And in this hadith, there is the key, the most important key of all for the study of Akhirul Zaman. 
If you miss this one, you miss methodology. And you'll end up joining ISIS and fighting a bogus jihad with Yankee money and weapons from NATO and with Karno Shaitan from nudged behind you supporting you. As you fought a bogus jihad in Libya, my words are bitter. Yes. And then you're fighting a bogus jihad in Syria. And now you're telling us you're bringing us the Khilafah. So that CNN and Al Jazeera and television stations around the world can go to work to present Islam in the worst possible image. To show Islam as a menace to mankind so that Israel can wage the big war that Israel wants to wage while appearing to be a savior to mankind. If you miss this one and you adopt the wrong methodology, you end up with ISIS and supporting ISIS. So what is there in this hadith? That he sees with the left eye, but he's blind in the right eye. One day, the Dajjal will have to appear in human form. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he would be a Jew. He would be a young man. He would be powerfully built. He'd have the curls of the Orthodox Jews. And he will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am Al Masih, the Messiah. When you study the subject, as we have been studying the subject, you know that day is not too far from now. I may not live to see it, but you will live to see it. <laughs> That's how close. It is. But if you study the, use the wrong methodology, then when he stands up there in Jerusalem and he says, I am the Messiah, Al Masih. And we say, This is Dajjal. You will say, No, he cannot be. The job because he sees with two eyes. And the Prophet said, Alayhi salatu was salam, the Jal sees with one eye. You were misled because you adopted the wrong methodology. That's why you end up supporting ISIS and the bogus Khilafah. What is the right methodology? How is it that the mu'min can read? Whether he is katib or ghayru katib, he can still read kafir. But Abu Jahal cannot read and George Bush cannot read. And this other one named Osama or Obama cannot read. <laughs> How come they can't read? How come the think tanks in Washington cannot read? But the one who has faith can read. Huh? Maybe we should send Abu Jahl to the eye specialist. Check out his eyes. How come he can't read? But the report comes back 
from the eye specialist that his eyes are okay. Still he cannot read. But this one can read. Will you not think before you support ISIS? Did Allah not send this Quran لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Did Allah not send this Quran to a people who think? Why have we stopped thinking? Is it because that the one who has faith is not reading with these eyes alone? Is it that in addition to these eyes, we have other ways of seeing? This is called epistemology, the branch of knowledge which studies knowledge. They don't teach it in the universities anymore. How do we acquire knowledge? The scientific method is that knowledge comes from external observation and experimentation and rational inquiry. And the scientific method says, wrongly so, that if knowledge comes from any other source, it's not knowledge. It belongs to Disneyland. But the Quran says otherwise. How I wish the Quran could be studied. How I wish that the Quran could be taught in universities. We'd have a different world today if we would teach the Quran. The Quran tells us, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ It's not these eyes which are blind. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. So that the Quran gives us a different epistemology that we see with external sight and we also see with internal sight. And so now we can subject the hadith to something called ta'wil. Ta'wil. Tafsir is to explain. Ta'wil is to interpret. And we have to talk today about ta'wil. And when we talk on ta'wil, we go to the Quran, not to the Hadith, to the Quran. So the one who has faith can read because he's seeing with the internal eye. And the one who is Abu Jahal cannot read because he is internally blind. And so now we can explain the hadith the way, excuse me, the Salafi cannot do it. I have not come to USM with boxing gloves to take on the Salafi. No. Mine is a learned and a respectful response to a challenge from the Salafi. And I expect that he will respond to me in like ways.
the ta'wil or the interpretation is that when the Dajjal sees with the left eye, it symbolizes external sight, knowledge that is externally acquired. And when the Dajjal is blind in the right eye, it symbolizes internal blindness. And all those who follow Dajjal will be internally blind. How then can we ensure that we are not internally blind? The heart can see only when the heart has faith. And uh, you cannot fool Allah. وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart. Be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart. So Allah knows whether this heart is worshipping him or worshipping the dunya. And that's why Surah Al-Kahf gave us the story of the rich man and the poor man. The rich man worshipped his two gardens. With his lips he says, I worship Allah. But with his heart he worshipped his wealth. And he believed that because he was rich, he is superior. <laughs> so he is looking down at the poor. And the poor man is warning him, be careful. You should say, Ma sha Allah, for what Allah has given to you. Because Allah can take it away from you. It's tomorrow, see what's going to happen to the United States. Just watch and wait and see. And Allah can give me better than what you have. And so said, so done. Allah withdrew the water and the gardens were all destroyed. And guess what he said, the rich man? Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. Woe unto me that I have committed this act of shirk. With the lips you say you worship Allah, but the heart worships elsewhere. So Allah hovers between a man and his heart. And Allah knows whether or not this heart is faithful. When the heart is faithful to Allah and there is faith in the heart, then Allah will put noor in the heart. And when there is noor in the heart, then the heart can see. Without that noor in the heart, no scholarship, not even a PhD from Al-Azhar University. No scholarship, none, can penetrate in Mu'akhir zaman Be warned about that. There are two kinds of verses in the Quran. 
Let us now turn to the serious part of this subject. There are two kinds of verses in the Quran. This is at the beginning of Surah Ali Imran. Allah speaks about Ayat Muhkamat, verses which are plain and clear. You don't need any interpretation, plain and clear. And these are the Ummul Kitab, the very heart of the Quran is there. So you have no excuse. <laughs> you have no excuse. The heart of the Quran is plain and clear like daylight. But Allah in his wisdom, and Washington is very angry about it, very angry, that Allah should put into the Quran a second kind of verse. What is it? He calls it Ayat Mutashabihat. And we spoke briefly about it last night. What are Ayat Mutashabihat? Answer. These are verses of the Quran which have to be subjected to ta'wil, interpretation. Like the left eye and the right eye. <clears throat> and so ta'wil is a part of methodology for study and understanding of the Quran. Ta'wil is an integral part of methodology for studying the Quran. Because you cannot understand and penetrate the ayat mutashabiha without ta'wil or interpretation. The one who is firmly grounded in knowledge, he is the one with Allah's guidance who will be able to penetrate this part of the Quran, the ayat mutashabihat. And in Mu'akhir zaman is in ayat mutashabihat. So you cannot study this subject only with the rational faculty. Let me warn you, this is the most important branch of knowledge in Islam at this time. And you cannot study ayat, ilmu akhiru zaman, with only the rational faculty. You need more than that. Musa alayhi salam is in Sinai and he gives a khutbah. And one of Banu Israel comes to him and says, what a fine khutbah. You must be the most learned man in the world. And Musa alayhi salam replies, and of course, it is not Musa who is speaking, no. Allah is using Musa to represent the people who follow him, who think that they are the chosen people of Allah. Heaven is reserved for them. They are the elite of mankind. They are the intellectual and spiritual leaders of mankind. And all the rest of mankind are like cockroaches. So he says, yes, I am the most learned of all men on behalf of his people. Does not recognize Allah as the most learned. And Allah says to him, no, you are not the most learned. There's one more learned than you are. He says, I want to meet him. 
And anyone who is humble, intellectually humble, not arrogant, would always want to meet the one who is more learned, to learn from him. So Allah says you will meet him at a particular place. You'll meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. Majma'ul Bahrain. At the place where the two oceans meet. The one with the schoolboy methodology will think about Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So maybe I should go to Table Mountains in Cape Town and then <laughs> I'll see the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Now, Imam Baydawi is the only Mufassir of the Quran to have said no. You'll meet me, you'll meet the most learned of all men. The man who is the scholar par excellence of Akhirul Zaman, the one with the proper methodology, you will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. You will meet him at the place where the two oceans meet. What are the two oceans? The answer the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally received and when these two oceans of knowledge have been harmoniously integrated that is where you'll meet the most learned of all men so now take a fish, uh, ikan, ikan, take a fish, I don't know if it's ikan goreng or ikan baka, take a fish, put it in a basket <coughs> and go in search of Majma al Bahrain. When the fish jumps out of the basket and makes its way into the water, there you meet him. You know what the story is saying? It's saying you have to be humble. You were just saying, I am the most learned of all men. And now you have to take a fish, put it in a basket, and wait for the fish to jump out of the basket. Huh? This is to make you humble. If you are proud and arrogant, if you believe you are the elite of mankind, heaven is reserved for you. The rest of mankind are like cockroaches. You will never ever get true knowledge. You have to be humble. You cannot pick up a boxing glove for your teacher. Constantly fighting with your teacher. Not if you want to study this subject. You have to be humble. So Musa alayhi salam goes off in such of Majma'ul Bahrain and he takes the fish and he puts it in the basket and he takes a young man with him and welcome to Suratul Kaf. <coughs> While they were traveling, <coughs> they came to a rock and uh, they rested for a while at the rock. And Musa Islam fell asleep. 
when they woke up they continued their journey now listen carefully because you are young as they go past the rock something is different now before the rock they were moving 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 <laughs> but after the rock lakad lakina lakad lakina min safarina hadha nasaba the journey has now become difficult wearisome tiresome i wish i knew the bahasa language so i could explain to you in bahasa it's a difficult journey now take out the food let's eat because this journey has become wearisome tiresome difficult not like before Surah Al-Kahf is sending a message to you in Akhiru Zaman that if in your heart there is love for Allah and if you are searching for that way of life that will give you sukoon in your heart you are not being fooled by the shopping malls the glitter in tinsel town they don't hold any attraction for you not the shopping malls your heart hungers for something else your heart is hungering for sukoon for peace in this dunya and you can't get it Life is wearisome. Life is tiresome. Surah Al-Kahf is saying, "Turn around. Go back. Go search for the rock. Turn around. Go back. You've missed the rock." That was when the young man said, "Oh, I forgot to tell you." that when we stopped at the rock the fish jumped out of the basket and the fish made its way into the water in a wondrous way and Allah says no he did not forget shaitan caused him to forget So all of us will forget Imran also forgets and you will forget And when you forget and Allah causes you to remember you must now turn to Allah and ask him to guide you to that which is better So Musa alayhi salam said that's what we were looking for Let's hurry back to the rock. And when they returned to the rock, they found a man sitting on the rock. Musa alayhi salam realized this is the most learned man of all in the world and uh, we mean no offense at all to our sisters because each one of us has a mother our mother is a woman yes we came from a woman without a woman none of us would be here None of us would be here without a woman. But the man who is sitting on the rock is always a man, not a woman. <clears throat> This is the most learned of all men. 
So Musa alayhi salam greets him with salams. Assalamu alaikum. The man responds and says, What? A greeting like that? In a place like this? Who are you? He says, I I'm Musa. Oh, which Musa are you? Are you the Musa of Banu Israel, that Musa? Are you the Musa of Banu Israel, that Musa? Indicating that he does not belong to Banu Israel. <laughs> If he belonged to Banu Israel, he'd say, Welcome, our Musa. You are our Musa because he is Banu Israel. He doesn't say so. He says, Which Musa? Are you the Musa of Banu Israel? So he is not Banu Israel. Surah Al Kaf is sending a message to the Jews that you are not the most learned of all in the world. No. There is one more learned than you are. You better humble yourself and come to him for knowledge. So Musa alayhi salam says, yes, I am that Musa. In that case, look at wisdom. In that case, this is the most learned of all men speaking. In that case, <coughs> Allah has given to you knowledge that I don't have. And Allah has given to me knowledge that you don't have. No matter how learned you are, you must always be ready to learn from others. No matter how learned you are, you must always be ready to learn from others. And when you teach to others, do it with humility. Now, why is he sitting on a rock? <coughs> why is he sitting on a rock? This is religious symbolism and you must have insight, basira to understand the symbolism he is sitting on a rock because he is not sitting on shifting sand he is not the kind of man who any direction the wind blows he has to turn in that direction. So when Washington says one thing, suddenly you see him change and he's following the way of Washington. Hmm? And then Washington changes, says another thing, and suddenly you see the scholar of Islam changing, turning that way now. Why? He wants, he doesn't want to be called a terrorist. He doesn't want his name on any no-fly list. No. So he has to turn with the wind. But not this man. He sits on a rock because he is firm. Firm in his views. He speaks without fear. He does not speak to please the people. He speaks to please his Lord. And if the people are happy, Alhamdulillah. And if they are not, then that's just too bad. If he has to be one voice 
and one voice alone in the world, he will not change his mind. That is what it means to sit on a rock. He got a backbone made of steel, not a backbone made of recycled paper. So my daughters, when you look for a husband, find a boy, find a man who has a backbone made of steel, not one with a backbone made of recycled paper. And so <coughs> Musa alayhi salam says to him, I want to follow you so I can learn from what Allah has given to you. The teacher of Akhiru Zaman is Khidr. Khidr means green. He is the only teacher of Akhirul Zaman because only he has the right methodology. <clears throat> How did he get the name green? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that he came to a land which was barren, dry. And he sat down and everything became green. Like militia, green. The implication being that this is not a man who memorizes this kitab and then memorizes that kitab and memorizes that kitab and then spend the rest of his life like a machine <laughs> repeating what he's memorized. No, this is a man whose knowledge is like the rain. Raindrops. That when he speaks, it's like raindrops falling on the dead earth. And it comes back to life and everything is green. So when he speaks, the dead hearts come back to life. And the dead hearts now begin to vibrate in worship of Allah. This is Khidr. When, how did he get this kind of knowledge? Allah introduces him and says about him two things. And listen carefully. Two things about his scholarship. Two things. Ataynahu rahmatan min indina wa'allamnahu min ladunna ilma. I gave him kindness. I gave him kindness. I gave him Kindness. He's kind. He's compassionate. And I gave him knowledge directly from myself. Two things. You cannot have the knowledge alone. You must also be kind. Kindness must be there in every single particle of your body. The way you speak. the way you behave, your capacity to be forgiving and merciful, your capacity to be charitable and kind. And in addition to that, وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّ عِلْمًا Allah gave him knowledge directly from Allah. And we call that spiritual insight spiritual insight, internal, intuitive, spiritual 
inside. That's why Washington is so angry. Because they can't get it. How important is this spiritual insight? Before we get the answer, Musa says, I want to follow you so I can learn from you. Before Khidr responds to him, let us step back a little. How important is this? This is back to methodology. Only the Rasikhuna fil ilm can understand and penetrate the mutashabihat. What is their secret? The answer is, they say, Kullum min indi rabbina. The whole of the Quran is from my Lord. So if you want to understand the part, you got to study the whole. You got to take all the verses of the Quran pertaining to a subject. Like for example, what happened to him when they attempted to crucify him. Hmm? And then they boasted, Inna qatalna al-Masiha Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. We've killed him. The Messiah, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, we've killed him. Hmm? If you want to penetrate this subject, which is mutashabiha, you got to get the totality of the data in the Quran, all of it. And then you got to bind them together to make a harmonious whole. Because nothing is contradictory in the Quran. Nothing. No verse of the Quran cancels another verse. No verse of the Quran cancels or abrogates another verse. Everything in the Quran is harmonious. I know the question you're going to have afterwards, supposedly. Everything in the Quran is harmonious. So you've got to be able to bind them together. My teacher, a blessed memory calls it the system of meaning of the Quran. My teacher Maulana, Dr. Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah, he said, look at the stars in the sky. I mentioned this last night. To the untrained eye, they're just beautiful. The stars in the sky, they're just beautiful. They twinkle. But to the navigator on a ship in the ocean, he must be able to read the stars. The stars are not just there to twinkle beautifully. No! Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِحِ Masabi, plural of misbah, lamp. He says that the stars are there to function as lamps. A lamp is something that allows you to see. And so the stars are there to allow you to navigate the ship. But you have to be able to understand the relationship between the stars which make them a harmonious whole. This is not for schoolboys. No, this is for scholars. To take all the verses of the Quran and bind them together on a particular subject to make a harmonious whole. In other words, if you forget everything else, remember these words. As a scholar, 
you have to be able to connect the dots connect the dots when you learn to connect the dots with the stars you can navigate the ship when you learn to connect the dots in the Quran you'll be able to understand the mutashabihat when you learn to connect the dots of history you will understand that Pax Britannica did not emerge by accident. No! <laughs> Pax Britannica came into being for a particular reason. But only eschatology can explain it. Oxford University cannot do it. Cambridge cannot do it. The Sorbonne cannot do it. Harvard cannot do it. Yale cannot do it. MIT cannot do it. Only eschatology can do it. A Pax Britannica did not come into being by accident. And the sterling pound did not emerge as an international currency by accident. And Pax Americana did not replace Pax Ameri uh, Britannica by accident. And the US dollar did not replace the sterling pound by accident. When you learn to connect the dots of history, you will understand the historical process. As no university can teach you. And so spiritual insight that is the key for connecting the dots. But the one who has pride and arrogance, I am the elite, how could he do it? Will Allah give him no? So Musa alayhi salam says, I want to follow you so I can learn from you what Allah gave to you. Listen to the answer. Listen to the answer. Khidr al-Islam replies and says, Innaka lan tastatiya ma'ya sabra. Wa kayfa tasbiru ala ma lam tuhid bihi khubra. You cannot, you cannot show patience with me in what I have to teach. How can you bear with patience that which lies beyond your capacity to comprehend? Because you are one-eyed. إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَتِيَ مَعِيَ صَبْرَ وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُوا عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِدْ بِهِ خُبْرَ These are the two most important ayat in the epistemology of the Qur'an. <coughs> so when you become a student of such a teacher, when you find your khidr, I am now an old man, tomorrow I'll be in my grave. But you are young, and you're going to be searching for your khidr. The scholar who is the only one, the only one, who can be a guide in Akhiru Zaman. Remember to be humble. Don't go with boxing gloves. Don't go challenging him. Be patient with him until he explains to you your hidden. So Musa said, I promise you, I will be patient. Okay, I accept you. You can come along, but on one condition. Don't ask any questions. Teachers don't behave like this. Which normal teacher speaks like that? Huh? How could a teacher tell the student, don't ask any questions? This is not a normal teacher. This is Khidr. 
And this is the price you will have to pay if you want to study Ilmu Akhirul Zaman. So he promises he will not ask any questions. And then they travel, and then there's the boat, and there's the boy, and then there's the wall. I don't have to tell you, you all know. I have this book, which is the Tafsir Surat al Kaf, the text, translation, and commentary, uh, which is the whole surah. And I have this one, which is Surah al Kaf in the modern age, which is the Ta'wil of the surah. I have this one, which is on Ya'juj and Ma'juj, which is the third book on Surah al Kaf. I have one more to write and make dua that I can write it on the Dajjal, then the quartet will be finished. <coughs> you must not ask any questions, and then three events occur. And on each occasion, Musa alayhi salam delivers judgment, and his judgment is wrong. His judgment is wrong because he does not have a full knowledge of the subject. His judgment is wrong because he does not have a full knowledge of the subject. He's only seeing a part of it. Like today we now have pipe born water. Huh? And everybody performing the wudu with the pipe born water. And everybody performing the wudu of Gog and Magog, and everybody have abandoned the wudu of Muhammad. They don't understand. A trap was set for them, and they walked into the trap. And they're performing a disgraceful wudu. That's the wudu they're performing. And with that wudu, they want to perform salat. And then they come to teach you Islam <laughs> and they cannot even perform wudu. So you have a partial understanding and you make the mistake. That's what happened to Musa alayhi salam. Or I didn't want to say it last night, but let me say it now. I hope I don't spoil your lunch. You cannot get no without water. You cannot get Noor without water. Water is the road to Noor. Water. I. And if you disrespect water, forget it. No Noor for you. You cannot waste water and still expect to get no. And that's what you do when you make wudu now. Do you think the American Indians who lived in America before the devil came to take over America? Hmm? The devil came from Europe to take over America. The American Indians and there is a stream of water and there are fish in the water and the fish is food eh? and he is so good he can take a spear and catch a fish and he wants to urinate, he wants to pass water do you think an American Indian will go and urinate in the river? Eh? How come you're so quiet? What's wrong with you, so quiet? Huh? No. An American Indian will show respect for water. He will not urinate into water. He will not pass his stool into water. Muhammad would dig a hole and put the stool there and cover it. And that's the best way up to this day, the best way. 
because it can then decompose because of oxygen and become fertilizer. But we have our PhDs. <laughs> we belong to the age of progress and knowledge. So we do it in something called a WC. Yeah. We urinate into water. And Allah says, for my yamal mithqara zafratin sharayyara. Even if it be an evil deed as small as the weight of an ant, you're going to have to answer for it. Urinating into water? Nobody ever did that before. Dajjal came along with his WC toilet. <laughs> hmm? And then defecating, putting the stool into water so it cannot decompose anymore. No, there's no oxygen in the water. And then it goes to a sewage system. And where it is pumped, it's pumped into the lakes and into the rivers and to the coastal waters. Contaminating the lakes and the rivers and the coastal waters. This is the modern age. And the fish eat it. And then we buy the fish and it's mashallah, ikan baka. <laughs> so you're only seeing a part of the subject and you make wrong judgment. And Musa did it three times. Khidr al-Islam because he has full knowledge. He can see what Musa cannot see. And believe you me, we have plenty blind people in the world today. Believe you me, we actually have people in the world today with the knowledge of cattle. That you could take a piece of paper, put a picture on it, put a number on it and give it a fictitious value and it becomes money and even your central bank even your central bank don't have five ringgits worth of knowledge and intelligence to understand this is bogus this is fraudulent this is utterly haram and Imran Hussein could talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. It makes no difference. It makes no difference. If you had a little bit of sense, you'll understand that Israel is not so stupid as you are. That tomorrow Israel is going to bring gold and silver as money. While you stupid, foolish Muslims still remain following the enemies of Islam with this bogus money. Israel is going to bring gold and silver tomorrow as money. I hope I don't live to see that day because the shame and the embarrassment will be too great for me. My ummah, the ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasla, and you cannot even recognize this as bogus and fraudulent as haram. Where are the scholars of Islam? Musa alayhi islam does not have the full knowledge. Khidr has the full knowledge. And so Khidr is able to explain the boat, the boy, and the wall. I want to end with a little bit of ta'wil on all three. <clears throat> In the case of the boat, he damaged it because he knows that something is coming and they're going to lose their property. And by damaging it, he saved the boat. So when you have knowledge which comes directly from Allah, you are able to anticipate.
anticipate what is coming. My critics, and they have no other job in the world other than to criticize Imran Hussein. No, his books must not be in our bookshop. No, he must not be invited to come and lecture. <laughs> Protestant Islam. When you have the knowledge that comes directly from Allah, when Allah blesses you with that insight, you are able to look ahead and you can see events which are about to occur. Like for example, I mentioned last night that nuclear war is coming. Nuclear war is around the corner between United States and NATO on the one hand and Russia and China on the other. There'll only be one nuclear war in history. Only one. Can't be two. <laughs> huh? That nuclear war is coming. And they want it sooner rather than later. Because the longer they wait, the stronger will Russia become. I was of the opinion that perhaps the nuclear war would be five or ten years from now. And then I went to attend a conference in Iran in September, a conference of independent thinkers. And on the first night that I was there, I had two dreams one after the other. And in both the dreams I saw nuclear war. I saw the missiles being shot into the sky. And I saw that Pakistan was a part of the nuclear war. The Christians call it Armageddon. The Prophet called it Malhama. Would it not be of benefit if we are able to anticipate that nuclear war is coming? And what can we do to prepare for it? Yes, only Allah knows the future. You don't have to tell me that. But Allah can, if He wishes, convey knowledge to those whom He chooses. And so with the methodology of Khidr alayhi salam, you can look into the future and see that a king is coming to seize the boats. And by damaging the boat, he saves the boat. Similarly today we know the US dollar is going to collapse, probably with the nuclear war. I don't think it will collapse before that, but I can be wrong. And when the, nuclear, when the US dollar collapses, all the paper money in the world will go with it, including your ringgit. Their plan is to have one universal currency, one for all of mankind. And it will be invisible electronic money. And if we are so stupid to accept the paper money, will we be so stupid to accept the electronic money as well? When we should be returning to Dina and Dirham? So, when you have internal, intuitive, spiritual insight, and you study Surah al kahf of the Qur'an, you are able to anticipate what is coming. Number two, the boy. The boy. And he killed the boy. Because he knew that this boy was going to grow up to join ISIS. <laughs> and go fight the bogus jihad. And become a threat not only to his parents but to the whole ummah. You can see ahead. But now look at something else. The wall. And the wall is collapsing. And he rebuilds the wall. 
And Musa cannot understand why he's rebuilding the wall amongst the people who would not offer any hospitality. The answer is because of the knowledge which comes from him, he can not only look into the future, he could also look into the past and reinterpret history. That there is a treasure underneath the wall. <laughs> It belongs to two orphans. And Allah wants that these orphans should grow up and get the treasure that their father left for them. So when you have this knowledge which comes directly from Allah, you're not only able to look into the future and anticipate what is coming, you're also able to look back into the past and connect the dots of history and recognize the dot that connects Pax Britannica with Pax Americana with Pax Judaica which is around the corner and you'll understand therefore the movement of history and you'll be able to anticipate how much time is there left before the Malhama and then when the Malhama takes place, what comes after that? The conquest of? Help me somebody. Come on, help me somebody. After the Malhama, the conquest of? You got homework to do. The conquest of? Constantinople. Your prophet said so. The Malhama is coming, the nuclear war. And after the nuclear war, the next thing to occur will be the conquest of Constantinople. That is why Mustafa Kemal changed the name and prohibited the use of the word Constantinople. And we say to Mustafa Kemal, get lost. If Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam referred to the city as Constantinople, then that's sunnah. No Mustafa Kamal could tell me I cannot follow the sunnah. Huh? The conquest of Constantinople makes military sense only in one context. And that is that the Russian Navy could pass through the Bosphorus and the Straits of Dardanelles into the Mediterranean Sea. So we can say from USN, we can say it today, that Russia will survive the nuclear war. NATO, you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. Russia will survive the nuclear war as a naval power. And the Russian Navy will pass through the Bosphorus and the Straits of Dardanelles into the Mediterranean. Because when we conquer Constantinople, NATO's back will be broken. What comes after? The conquest of Constantinople, Khuruj of Dajjal. Khuruj of Dajjal. And after that comes Imam al Mahdi. And then comes the return of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. But that's not our subject for today. I suggest to you the Surah Al Kaf of the Quran is the surah par excellence of ilmu akhir zaman and if you have to spend the rest of your life studying it you must do so finally there's a shortcut to nur the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam recite surah al kaf on the day of juma and you will get noor from the Samawat to the up. And that noor will stay with you until 
next Juma. And he said, recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kaf over Dajjal and you'll be safe from his fitna. We pray that Allah may bless you all to be able to study and understand Surah Al-Kaf of the Quran that it may become a nur with which you'll be able to understand the world today. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir ali wa tub alayna ya mulana inna ka anta tawwab rahim barahmatika ya ahma rahimin